Sumonagashi marbling. It's much different from Turkish marbling, where Turkish marbling uses a thickening agent in the size. That is what the size is, is a water mixed with carrageenan or methyl cellulose or even cornstarch to thicken the water, and make it easier to, to work on. This is totally different. This isn't like that. Um, we're just using regular water. You saw me fill it up with the hose. And we're simply going to drop dots of ink on the surface of this water. So it's kind of similar to the nail marbling videos where they're just dropping nail polish onto the surface of water and then dipping their nails in. Except instead of using nail polish and nails, we are using ink and paper. So I'm waiting for this to be real still. It looks it looks fairly still. I think I think we can start working. The reason I want to wait for it to be real still is because when I put the ink on the surface, if there's any movements in here, it's going to move my design immediately. And if you want that, that's great. But usually when you're starting out and just making your design, you want the water to be fairly still. I have kind of a blackish color in this brush. And in this brush, I have just a mixture of soap and water. I just use dish soap. And this is going to act as like the clear, like the white of my paper. And this, of course, is the actual ink. When I first start, I always like just using one color. And then my soap and water mixture, it just keeps it a lot more simple. And it allows you to focus more on learning the technique of it rather than getting really excited and trying all the different colors because then you end up with kind of a mess. Let's get started. So I'm going to start with uh, my color first and I'm going to just tap this against the surface of the water and I wanna do it really slow and gently because I don't want the tip of the brush to go below the surface of the water. If it does, the ink is going to just fall off and hit the bottom. By just tapping it, against the surface, it draws the ink off of it. I don't know if you saw that because typically the first few deposits of color, you, you, you know, you don't really see it because it's spreading out across the entire surface of the water. As I work more, you'll be able to see it more. Concentrate. That was really nice and you can see that clear outline of where my soap water went down. I'm gonna go back in with my soap water. Now you're probably seeing it, right? So what you do is just you just keep going back and forth. You see that blob that went towards the bottom? I got a little too excited and the brush went below the surface. So I have to just be more careful And once you get the hang of this, you can actually move pretty quickly as long as you're gentle with your brushes. And you want to keep doing this until the entire um, tray is just saturated in colors and concentric rings. So I'm just going to keep going. This is something you don't you don't want to rush with it. Take your time. You know, you're not racing against the clock. That's another way in how this is different from Turkish marbling or even um, doing your nails. You don't have to worry about the ink drying. It's it's sitting on top of water. It's not going to dry out. You could let this sit for 20 minutes, come back and pull your print and it'll be fine. This is definitely an activity too where the more time you spend on this, the better it's going to look. The more concentrated your color will be on your paper when you pull it. And also it just, it looks great. I mean, it already looks kind of like wood green. I finally went through here a few times and then pulled my sheet of paper. There, the color would be pretty muted and the design wouldn't be very interesting either. 
this is a very relaxing activity. It's something um, you can do any time and you can work with kids or adults. I've taught children as young as four how to do this. With children, I like to use uh, pieces of yarn instead of paintbrushes because um, little kids have trouble, you know, their motor skills aren't quite there yet. And when you use pieces of yarn, it, it soaks up the color and then when they touch the surface of the water with it, it just kind of bends. The actual piece of yarn bends before it could ever go below the surface of the water. And that's good because then the ink is being dropped onto the water and not under it instead. So the kids are happy, you're happy. So you see, like I haven't done anything, but there's like all this zigzag pattern at the outer edges. And that's just partly the action of me putting ink on the surface of the water and also partly me talking and the the my breath touching the surface of the water is causing slight waves in it this is an activity that you don't have a lot of control over you can kind of predict what you're doing but don't go into it expecting anything it's just going to kind of do what it wants to do so if you're a perfectionist, you might have to get over yourself for a moment. I know what that's like. So I think I'm going to drop down a little bit more. And then I'm going to be ready to pull my print. I'm working with this darker color too, so you can get a better idea of what's going on. And you see, the longer I hold my brush in there, the, the wider the circle becomes. Of course, if you just drop it for a second, you get a little circle. All right. This looks good. I'm not going to comb through it or anything. I'm just going to pull my print like this. paper's a little floppy when um, I pick it up out of the water. So if you're not able to get a good look at it, I'll take a photo of it and show it at the end of the video. So I'm just going to quickly lay this on top. I don't want to get any bubbles underneath the paper. If you get bubbles under here, you're going to end up with a clear spot on your paper. Let it sit for a few seconds. I'm just going to peel it back. It's a very, no, I ripped it. It's okay, it's okay. We can always make more, right? But this is it. Just gonna lay it on top. And this is okay, this isn't gonna damage it or anything or the color, but you can see that's my whole sheet of paper. You can actually keep marbling on top of this, even though I have this ink over here. Um, as long as it's at the bottom, it's not going to affect anything. But since it kind of makes it difficult for you to see what I'm doing, I'm going to go ahead and rinse this out and start over, and then we'll get started on our next one. I, got, I have a little bit of movement in the water, so I'm gonna wait a moment. I accidentally jostled it when I was sitting down. Okay. So you know how last time I was just going back and forth, back and forth, from the middle, and then of course, that part 
where I was starting was eventually shifting elsewhere into the vat. Like I think when I ended it, I was actually up there. You don't have to always work at the same point. You know, I like how it looks, but you can just as easily go off into another area, like right here. If you just want to decide to add color in right here, you can do that. Especially if there's an area of your tray that for some reason the color is just not reaching it, feel free to go over and drop some color in there. There's this kind of really cool, almost like Gemini effect going on right here. I like it. There's obviously some um, slight draft in the room that's causing the water to move around in this circular motion. So I think I'll, oops, sure, why not? It's nice to have something for your arms to rest on. Sometimes people rest it on the sides of the vat, but I find that causes a little bit too much movement. So right now I'm resting them on my knees, but when I'm moving further up there, I can't do that. It's a little shaky. And I just bumped it. If I want to leave it like this, I can do that. Or if I want to get more interesting effects, I can grab like a toothpick, just a toothpick or even the end of your brush. And I just very slowly move this through the water. I don't want, I don't want any sudden movements. I just want to move through the water gently because as you know, any slight um, motion even near the water creates a huge pattern so long after the toothpick leaves the water the design is still going to be moving now what I like to do instead of just pulling a sheet like this I like to go back in and add some more color so I can get kind of like these nice um, large areas of color between ribbons of color. I usually go back in with a third color and do that, but I think I'm just going to do that with my darker color. So I think I'll add in a drop here. And I think that's it. I don't think I'm going to add anything else to that. But I kind of want it to look like it belongs here, so I'm going to take my toothpick again and just kind of encourage some mixing going in here so it looks like it belongs here, that it's not just some tumor that decided to start growing on our print. Maybe I'll even just do this inside of it, and that motion will then cause this to kind of make these lobular shapes outward. I don't know if I like that. I don't think I like that. I'm going to go in. I'm going to try to save it. I think that's going to do it. Maybe even add in that. You don't want to overwork this. It's really easy to do. I find myself doing that sometimes. my paper and again
again, this time I'm going to just flip it over onto the surface of the water so you can see it right away. Quickly doing this, making sure there's no bubbles below my paper. This looks like it went on really nice. I'm not seeing any kind of weird shapes or dry areas. Okay. Sometimes the paper wants to rip too. If it's a more delicate paper, it'll be easier to rip in the corners when you're trying to pick it up. And there's my print. Let me try to rinse it off a little bit in here. Because I have some streaking. But there it is. There's my print.